And now, let's join Ace Broadcaster Mamode Akuga as he takes us inside the Niger Delta. Hello out there and welcome to the program. It's Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Nigeria's oil-rich region. I'm your regular host, Mamode Akuga. Today's package is centered on the state of infrastructure and human development in the Niger Delta. We kickstart with a story on the deplorable condition of the E2 Calabar Road, which has become a debt trap over the years. In our second story, we take a look at the abandoned state of projects initiated by the Niger Delta Development Commission and DDC in Arade and Emevo communities in Isoko North local government area of Delta State. And finally, in today's package is a special report on how delayed passage of NDDC budgets has impacted on the development of the Niger Delta region. Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Nigeria's oil rich region will be back in just a moment. Don't go away. Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, determined to make a difference. Glad to have you back on the program. It's Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Nigeria's oil-rich region. The deplorable condition of the E2 Calabar Road is giving commuters sleepless nights. Correspondent Nelson Ajay, who was at the badly damaged section of the road close to the border town of E2 in Akwaibom State, reports that its unmoderable state has become a source of nightmare for travelers and has equally crippled economic activities in its surrounding communities. Constructed in 1975, the Calabar Itu Highway is a trunk A road that links the south-south and the northern part of Nigeria, which makes it a very critical infrastructure to be given utmost attention. Traveling along the deplorable Calabar to Federal Highway in the past five years has become a frightening experience, especially during the raining seasons. But the situation has worsened in recent times as commuters spend more than 10 hours and sometimes nights in journeys that ordinarily would take much less time. The distance you would have covered in an hour's time, you spend up spending the whole day or a night. It's quite uncalled for. It seems we are not part of Nigeria. You need government to come and help us on this road. You don't suffer for this road, no, it's more. From 2000 up to this year. The plight of the road users is further compounded by unruly drivers who constantly struggle to maneuver through relatively good spots on the road. The ever busy Calabar to Federal Highway is a major route for many heavy duty trucks conveying cement, stones, and farm produce. Oftentimes, heavy truck drivers stubbornly go against the flow of traffic, thereby causing avoidable casualties on the road. Frustrated by the terrible state of the road, some commuters share their experiences. We heard that there's money, big money that they give it to them, but we didn't see, we didn't hear anything. And our people, our people are suffering. I mean, people are dying. Government need to do something about this road very fast. If not, any moment from now, the road will break into two. Even the small bridge there is bad. Any moment from now, that bridge will fall. And if that bridge collapses, there will be no road to cross to either Aquaibum or cross the to even Abia State. The dualization of the Calabar to Road has suffered setbacks due to lack of political will by successive administrations to get it fixed in the last 40 years. When contacted to comment on the state of the Calabar Itu Road, Special Advisor to President on Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Ita Enang, said funds for the construction of critical sections of the road had been allocated in the 2020 budget, which was slashed as a result of drastic fall in the price of crude oil in the first quarter of the year. The problem has been that of funding. So we're trying to raise money from the Sukuk bond to supplement what we have in the budget. Mr. President has done as much, so much, on the East-West Road. He's raising more money for the East-West Road. He's raising another loan for the Oron Calabar section. Let us get money from different funding windows for the Calabar E2, Federal Highway. 
Senator Ita Enang also blamed the continued deplorable state of the Calabar Itu Road to the nonchalant attitude of some political leaders in Akwai Bom and Cross River states. In his quest to fix the road, the presidential aide admitted that while he received some level of commitment from Governor Ben Ayade of Cross River State, the Akwaibom State Governor, Odom Emmanuel, was yet to indicate interest in getting the road fixed. On the Calabar Itu Ikorekwena Highway, I had taken extra step with the help of some consultants to work and look for money from extra funding sources. I am working on getting money from the African Development Bank. I am working on getting funds from the Infrastructure uh, Development Fund. I'm working on getting money from the extra sources. But I want to say with the greatest re regret that the only person whom we work together and struggle to get money from the, on this road has been Senator Odoma Odo Odoma when he was Minister of Budget and National Planning and I a liaison to the President of National Assembly. All the senators from Cross River State, the three of them, former and present, the three senators from Akwaibom State, former and present, none of them, and all the members of the House of Representatives from Cross River, all the members of Cross River, uh, the House Senate from Akwaibom State, I want them to call upon the name of their God and lift up their finger and said they have taken any step, budgetary or otherwise, in trying to get money for this road. I have had a meeting with the governor of Cross River State. He's handling part of it, and he has agreed to give some support on the part that is, done in, that is in Cross River State. I'm pleading with the governor of Akwaibom State, His Excellency Governor Odum Emmanuel, to please come on and assist as other states are doing on federal roads in their states. Essien Indueso, a former Minister of Housing from Akwaibom State, agrees with Senator Ita Enang that the Niger Delta currently lacks effective representation in the parliament to foster development in the region. Between 1999 and 2007, members of the National Assembly from the South-South region were very active pursuing their rights and getting them. That is why we were able to move a little up. But of recent when membership of the National Assembly and other political appointments are based on selection by, by the governors, we are not able to have the best representation at those positions. Considering the plight of the road users, Immediate action is needed on this road, whose relevance to economic development of the South-South and the rest of the country cannot be overemphasized. The federal government is expected to declare a state of emergency on the Calabar Itu Road and immediately seek ways to address the funding challenges currently preventing the commencement of work on the Calabar Itu Federal Highway. Inside the Niger Delta Delema Oil Producing Limited, oil production and exploration company. Belema Oil, truly indigenous, world-class brand. Littered with many abandoned road projects as well as an uncompleted solar water project awarded several years ago by the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, are Rade and Emevo communities in the Soko North local government area of Delta State appears to be amongst the most neglected oil producing communities in the Niger Delta. Consequently, President General of the Isoko Youth Federation, Comrade Ovie Mwakbo and some indigents of Arade and Imevo communities are calling on the NDDC to compel its defaulting contractors to complete all abandoned projects for the common good of the people. Correspondent Chika Budozie tells us more. In 2012, the NDDC awarded a contract for the Arade Solar Water Project to IKG Tech Nigeria Limited. It was a laudable effort to provide portable water for the community which had no access to safe drinking water. To the dismay of the community, however, the contractor deployed to site to commence preliminary work on the project and disappeared almost immediately. 
What has been delivered on the project till date are concrete basements for a water tank stand and a borehole. Nothing has been added since 2012 to date. Even after they have collected more than 70% payment from NDDC. So it was just like this project was given as a cola note to the contractor. The story behind a contract for emergency repairs of failed and unmotorable sections of Arade, a Quincy Street, is no less disheartening. At the time of visit to the community, there was nothing to suggest that the road construction contract awarded to River Limited was in existence. We have never seen any contractor work on this road since the foundation of this community. Now, a man has gone to NDDC with his paper collect uh, in the name of Arade Community Airways he wrote, collected money and disappeared. That is the situation everywhere. That is why they must carry this forensic audit timely. Equally abandoned is a one-kilometer Egbedu Road construction project in Arade community. Contractor handling the project, Smith Engineering Limited, had reportedly abandoned the project midway after receiving about 70% of the entire contract sum. Awarded to Smith Engineering Limited since 2012. At a point, I also reached out to them and they told me that uh, it was payment that was delaying them from uh, completing the job. But from my understanding, they got over 70% payment from NDDC. In neighboring Emevo community is the uncompleted Emevo Orogun Road construction project, which was conceived to link several communities in Isoku North local government and Ugeli North local government areas of Delta State. The 16-kilometer Emevo Orogun Road was awarded in four lots in 2017 at a total cost of 4 billion naira. The first lot of the road construction contract was awarded to Wekama Construction Company, which has so far demonstrated lack of capacity to handle the project. The contractor was said to have absconded after erecting a poorly designed drainage for the project. Since that time to today, not much work has been done. That is the stretch from Jenswesh to the first bridge, which is really of great concern. As a matter of fact, since the beginning of the contract in now, is the drainage that he has been. In trying to get more details about the contract, our crew got across to one Peter Ofoegbu, who was said to have facilitated the contract. The contract facilitator identified a certain Mr. Joel, whose mobile telephone number was made available to Inside the Niger Delta. Hello? Yeah, good afternoon, I'm on to. Uh, my name is Chika Obodozie from inside the Niger Delta. I'm calling you in respect of the Emevo Orogun Road construction project in Delta. I am not the one in charge of that job. As in, what do you mean, the person who the contract was awarded to? Yes, sir. No, no, I am not. We are facilitators. We facilitated the contract to the person handling it now. Okay, but are you aware that it's, it's been abandoned? Uh, some kind of. This is because we've been uh, trying to reach out to him since he claims he's in Kogi State. I think we are, I was in Emeva a couple of days back and we are waiting that he's going to come a couple of days from now. He has been evading us simply because he has not given us our facilitator's uh, payment. When contacted on his mobile phone, contractor handling the first lot of the Emevo Orugu Road construction project promised to get back to inside the Niger Delta, but neither did so nor take subsequent calls to his mobile line. Inside the Niger Delta NDDC, established in the year 2000 to help develop Nigeria's Niger Delta region. After two decades, what is their scorecard? The amount of money which the federal government is religiously allocating to NDDC, we'd like to see the results on the ground. They have been doing a lot in the last 19 years. But if they were doing quality projects, I'm sure that we would have seen so much on the ground. What is the state of the NDDC project in your community? Tell us about it and we will report it. Send us an email to inside the Niger Delta at gmail.com or call us on 080-920-76444. Inside the Niger Delta.
the authentic voice of Nigeria's oil-rich region. Oversight powers of the National Assembly to approve sundry expenditures of the Niger Delta Development Commission NDDC clearly spelt out in Section 18, Subsection 1 of the Act establishing the Commission provides that its annual budgets will have to go through proper legislative scrutiny to ensure transparency, accountability and efficient service delivery by the intervention agency. However, the tidy processes and undue delays witnessed in the passage of the NDDC budgets over years have left the Commission incapacitated to deliver on its mandate, as correspondent Tekena Biofuri reports. In the aftermath of the Joint National Assembly investigative hearing into alleged financial recklessness by interim management of the NDDC, the Commission's acting managing director, Professor Keme Bradikumo Ponde, has dismissed the legislative probe as a deliberate attempt to witch hunt his team. In a recent press statement, Professor Ponde listed contract payments allegedly made under duress to facilitate approval of the Commission's 2019 budget by the federal lawmakers. According to the NDDC boss, this blackmail scheme explains why the 2019 budget of the NDDC was passed by the NAS Committee in March 2020. As a critical examination of Professor Ponde's allegations suggests, he may not be far from the truth after all. The 2019 budget of the NDDC was submitted to the National Assembly in November 2019. It was, however, not approved till March 2020, barely weeks after the Commission was allegedly compelled to insert contracts influenced by the legislators in its budget for that financial year. Unfortunately, the NDDC was left with a window of about five weeks to implement its 2019 budget that was billed to expire by May 2020. It was gathered that the NDDC, through a mutual agreement with the federal lawmakers, wrote an official letter to the National Assembly requesting violence of statutory allocations in its 2019 budget, apparently to avert remittances to national coffers as it was confronted with several critical projects that were left unexecuted in the outgoing financial year. Rather than accede to the legitimate demand for budgetary violence, members of the National Assembly went to press with a letter of request for violence alleging financial recklessness by interim management of the NDDC. They had earlier forced us to pay their own contracts that they awarded and now they are coming to blackmail us. Those two committees have put the National Assembly in very bad light, whilst we know that majority of the people in the Senate and in the House of Reps had no knowledge of what these two committees were doing to them. All the faults lay in those two committees, which operate as one-man committees, because even members of those committees are not aware of all these efforts that are being done to rape the destiny of the Niger Delta people. Before we came on board, the IMC, the two chairmen in the National Assembly for the House of Reps and for the Senate, they were the de the, the facto executive of the NDDC. It is what they wanted, they directed what they wanted, and that is what will be done. They want us out of this place. So that when we leave, they can award the contract. Of course, nothing will be done. One of the fallouts of delayed passage of the Commission's 2019 budget is non-payment of fees and allowances of students studying abroad under the Foreign Scholarship Scheme of the NDDC. In February this year, when interim management of the NDDC was appointed, the Commission was already incapacitated to implement its Foreign Scholarship Scheme due to delayed passage of its 2019 budget. Faced with this challenge, current managers of the NDDC had made frantic efforts to pay all outstanding fees and allowances of the Commission's foreign scholars. However, all such efforts were resisted by political detractors 
with the tacit support of some members of the National Assembly. Scholarship started in 2016, they didn't pay. 2017, they didn't pay. 2018, 2019, we weren't here. As soon as we came, somebody just told them to go and protest. We have been on the late EDFA and myself. We have done everything until the matter reached the CBN. The CBN said, one, there's no budget for us to pay. And in fact, in the, in the last uh, public hearing, you heard when they were asking the MD, where this scholarship you want to pay, where are you going to get the vote from? So we said, look, these students are suffering overseas. We would like to pay them. Even begging them, please give us the opportunity to pay these students. They said no. This is not the first time members of the National Assembly have been accused of abusing their oversight powers over federal agencies in the country. When accused of abusing her office by the House Committee on Capital Markets, former Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Ms. Aruma Ote, in March 2012, alleged that she was being persecuted for refusing to pay the sum of 39 million naira in gratification to leadership of the committee. And I believe that if we want to carry out an investigation, and as you said, in the interest of Nigeria and not in your own interest, I should not be subjected to what you subjected me to because the SEC did not give you 5 million naira in cash on Tuesday the 13th of March. It should not be. It should not be, Honorable Henry. And I'm sorry because we need to start running this country differently. We need to start running this country differently. Some years after, precisely in 2019, Professor Mojishola Adeyeye, Director General of the National Agency for Food, Drugs, Administration and Control, NAFDAC, alleged that members of the House of Representatives Committee on Healthcare Services made a financial demand for their welfare during an official visit to the agency in December 2017. I was shocked when I was told to give money. I said, money for what? To who? To the committee that visits us, no, that visited us. While there is no concrete evidence to prove the culpability of National Assembly members in all the allegations leveled against them, it is not in doubt that such allegations are capable of eroding public trust and confidence in the people's political representatives elected to champion the cause of their constituents in Parliament. In the more recent case of the National Assembly versus Interim Management of the NDDC, not a few Niger Deltans have prevailed on the federal lawmakers to leave above board in the discharge of their oversight powers over the Commission's annual budgets. Currently in the Niger Delta, there are fears that bad history is about to repeat itself as the 2020 budget of the NDDC is yet to be passed in the National Assembly few weeks into the last quarter of the year. Please release this budget so as to pay contact us. Our brothers and friends are outside the country, schooling as well. But you can imagine leaving your child to another man's land and then he calls for you to give him money to pay his fees and it's so touching. It's so touching. So we plead that if this 2020 budget of this NDDC will be released, contact us, will be paid. The NDDC was established through an act of parliament in the year 2000 to promote even and rapid development in the oil-rich Niger Delta region, which ironically is largely underdeveloped. 20 years after it was established as an intervention agency, there is a general consensus that the commission has failed to deliver on its mandate, due largely to inefficiency and endemic corruption in the system. NDDC is just an, an institution where they dump the loot for them to share. It's not for the general interest of the of Niger Delta. If it was so, Nigeria as a, as a nation is sponsoring a lot of fund into Niger Delta that could have at least developed some part of this. But it is not. The, the projects they bring up are white elephant projects. Consequently, President Muhammadu Buhari in September last year ordered a forensic audit of the Commission's operations from its inception in 2001 to 2019, 
with a view to repositioning it on the part of transparency, accountability and efficiency. In the current move to sanitize the NDDC, however, there are fears that the ongoing forensic audit of the Commission may not achieve desired results without the cooperation and support of the National Assembly members. With regard to budget approvals for the NDDC and any other federal agency for that matter, it is now incumbent on leadership of the National Assembly to begin to investigate how appropriations are made at the highest policy-making level of government. This is because governance in all systems is to a large extent influenced by the quality of policies put in place by the legislature, which is highly revered as the first branch of government. Inside the Niger Delta Get to know the future. The future is ITEO. Well, with that report, we draw the curtain on the program. Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Niger's oil rich region, will be back same time, same station next week. Until then, you can follow us on our social media handles showing right now on your screen. Until next week, remember to always wash your hands, maintain proper hygiene, and keep safe social distance to avoid contracting the deadly coronavirus disease. I am Mamode Akuga. Thank you so much for watching, and bye for now. Mm -hmm.